Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Phil Rowley. Today, we're coming to you from the Parklands region of Southwest Manitoba, an area renowned for its trout fishing. One of the primary reasons to come here is the diversity of species you can catch on the fly. Rainbow trout, brown trout, brook trout, tiger trout are just a few of the great fish here. We're gonna do our best to catch as many as we can, so stick around, it's gonna be a great show. Canada's heart beats. Today the new fly fisher is coming to you from the Parklands region of southwest Manitoba. The Parklands has long been one of my favorite stillwater playgrounds. This region is easily accessible by vehicle and almost every lake offers good paved or gravel road access and boat launches. Some lakes even feature washroom facilities and small campgrounds. In addition to campgrounds, there are good accommodation options to choose from if you prefer to base your Parklands experience from the comfort of a lodge or a hotel. From a fishing perspective, the Parkland area lakes have been groomed and managed with a stillwater angler in mind. Depending on the lake, you can choose from a variety of species on the fly, including larger than average rainbows, browns, tigers, and brookies. Everything the stillwater fly fisher could need. Diversity of species to pursue, large average size, and an uncrowded, often remote experience coupled with great access. It's always a good idea to check the shoreline, invest 10 minutes, learn a lot of information. We've got minnows around the dock here, and I just found a little damselfly nymph right here, swimming around. They could start to emerge today. It's certainly warm enough, and it's certainly the right time of the year. Again, your eyes, the best tools you got to help figure out what you should be doing. We're actually sitting in about eight feet of water. When I came over, I mapped it with my sounder. We're fishing in the 13, 14, right on that transition point. Transitions are always good. Going with coronamids, we've seen a couple fly by. I had a light olive one uh, land on me earlier. And I've got two coronamids on, about two feet apart. An albino pattern with a prominent white bead on the point fly and a zucchini, which is kind of a dull, chromey, uh, shiny gray color. 10 feet down and we're just gonna wind at our back, quarter the cast out and let the wind dance the fly, move that and watch that indicator for anything from a strong pull down to a half down just to a slide. The takes can be subtle. So we'll give it a try, see what happens. Roll cast, mend and get comfortable. Let that wind do the work. There we go. Fish on. Yeah. Waiting for those throbbing runs to start. There we goes. Keep that t tension on, he's coming at me. <laughs> oh, I'm sent. Keep the tip down, stop him from jumping. Now oh, he's going for a run. Using my forefinger just to help guide and control low rod position. Get that butt into the fight. Feels like a good fish. What a horse, it's a good fish. You can see a nice big wide tail. Nice big tiger, nice big tiger. Look at the shoulders on that thing. Oh, he doesn't like that. I'll wait for him to swim around in circles again. Maybe I can intercept him. Pay close attention at the net here. This is when things tend to go haywire. Still surging down. How about you, Mr. Tiger? My forearm's tired. It's on his side. Swing him in. Into the net. She goes. Let's have a look at you. Oh, you're a big boy. You like that, did you? Look at that big head on there, right behind the head. It just, look at that big dorsal fin markings of vermiculations. 
Let him swim away. Thanks for playing. There he goes, swimming away. Woo! That's fun, let's do that again. I love it when a strategy pays off. You know, the, we're fishing indicators on still waters and, and still waters might be a bit of a misnomer because you still have to deal with current. So you're still gonna do techniques, uh, particularly mends, and the mending process is still the same as you would in a river. The goal here is not to move the indicator, whereas on a river in a dry fly situation, you don't want to move the dry fly. So rather than an aggressive wrist flick, which really isn't a mend, you want to just pick the rod up and reposition or mend the line on the surface. And the goal here is to try and keep the connection as straight as you can between your fly, your indicator, and then ultimately yourself. So when that indicator shows signs of a take, you're immediately taking up slack and driving that hook home and landing that fish. When you come to the parklands region of southwest Manitoba, your line selection is really no different than any other lakes that you may visit in North America. It always pays to have as many fly lines as you can carry to cover all scenarios. But there are three core lines you'll want to make sure are represented in your kit bag. A floating line that will help you cast long leaders when you're fishing coronamids or using indicators to fish coronamid pupa patterns or larval patterns. A clear intermediate line or a hover that sinks at one to two inches per second for cast and retrieves. And then a fast sinking density compensated type five, six or seven uh, sink rates for fishing uh, coronamids vertically uh, in late spring when they're emerging in deeper water. Fishing attractor patterns with aggressive uh, strips. Uh, the line doesn't uh, overpower the retrieve in those scenarios. And of course, if you're faced with fishing deep water. So make sure you have those lines with you when you come to Manitoba. fish on. Slow rod raise to induce a take at the end of the retrieve. Look at the colors on that fish. Wow. Parklands region of southwest Manitoba. Unbelievable public stillwater fisheries here all season long. an organization that was involved in starting up called the Fisheries Lake Improvement Program for the Parkland region. And uh, our d idea was to build these clumps of lakes or develop clumps of lakes in certain areas all within a fairly easy day, half day, one hour drive. Another thing that we're doing is a series of field events where we run in and we've looked at age and age and growth, uh, the, the numbers of trout and brown trout and other species that we catch per 100 meters of transect. And we identify issues after assessment and Patterson Lake has a, a white sucker uh, invasion, so to speak. So we spent uh, about two or three days and pulled out about five, uh, five or six or four or five or six thousand of them last year with the shocker and at the same time gain knowledge on uh, on our brown and rainbow trout populations. And we're doing this on all, all the lakes that we're involved in. I've often been asked what a visiting angler could do to help in terms of the whole flipper initiative, anything else. And there is a, there is a website, it's just flipper.ca. Uh, and uh, there is a process there that was set up fairly recently for becoming a member and, and donating cash that way. You can, it's way more fair to the angler coming from far away if they know at least half what to expect, you know, besides weather and things like that. all anchored up here, got our back to the wind. Don't be in a big rush to get going. I know we're going fishing and it's exciting, but take a few moments to get yourself organized. We're out here for the day. So I've got my net handy. I'm even gonna give it my lucky ceremonial dunk, slide it off to the side a bit. I've got my kit bag right beside me, easy access. In fact, I'm gonna reach in and take out a couple of fly boxes, which I anticipate are gonna produce for me today. And that'll be some leech patterns. I always love fish and balance leeches, so we'll have those. And then some coronamids. I'll pull out a coronamid box or two, and there we go. So those are ready, what I anticipate. This could change, of course. And I've got my rods behind me, so I'm just going to reach around, grab 
The rod I'm going to start with right now, which will be my indicator setup. Everything's clean and tidy. Everything's in its place. We're ready to go fishing. We're not fighting the boat or our gear. There we go. Fish on. The chop of the waves is just dancing those coronamids so seductively, these tigers can't resist it. The fish just are conditioned to seeing them. They know that's lunch. It's an easy meal. It's rich in calories. The most, the earliest hatch to come off, the most prolonged. Low rod position helps keep that fish's head down. Now it's gonna go around the boat a few times. They seem to like swimming around boats. Let the rod be the shock absorber it was designed to be. It's a colorful male, big shoulders. Might have to land him on this side. Forearms get tired. <laughs> These guys are just bruisers. All right, he's coming around over to the side the boat's designed to take him on. Every time he kicks with the tail, it's transmitted up the leader. These low stretch cores are so, so beneficial. Because you get good hook sets. There he is. And into the net. Chubby little guy. He's got some color to him. Big male, big mouth. This one's got some beautiful coloring in the fall. They get vivid orange, even though they're sterile, they still get dressed up, but he's still got some remnants. He's big, he's aggressive. Look at that big hook nose. Big, powerful fins. It's a strong fish, gave a great fight. Make sure he's good and rested. Breathing. He's fighting me now. cruising the shoreline here, trying to find minnow feeding browns. These browns will stake out a territory and chase minnows. And we've got one, at least maybe two in here that have been aggressively chasing the minnows right against the long stem bulrush against the shoreline. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my floating line. I'm gonna set a fly, a balanced minnow or leech about two feet below and see if we can cast near those rising surfacing browns and get one to take. So I've removed the indicator from my leader, removed the balance fly. I'm worried that that indicator, A, is gonna make a big splash and scare these fish, and B, they are really tight in there. Sometimes I think they're in just enough water to color, cover their back. So I'm going to a little tied down minnow imitation, uh, unweighted, to imitate the small fathead minnows and brook stickleback these browns are chasing around. And we're just gonna use the same floating line setup, 10, 12 feet a leader, more accurate that way, cast into these pockets and try to put this fly on a feeding brown's head. There you go, I got him. <laughs> I got him, hunting browns. I tried with an indicator at first, but with no luck and was scared that the splash of the indicator might spook the fish. So what I did is I took the indicator off and I put on a little tied down minnow. It's just a very slender, silver bodied, brown back. The fathead and brook stickleback that populate this lake are typically brown or olive backs with pearls of silver bellies. And I've just been casting it in there. We've been watching these fish swirl and chase minnows. You see the little nervous water as the trout herd the minnows into a circle and then go in there and run right through them. 
nice brown trout. I've got pretty strong tippet on here because there's lots of debris in there and as soon as I hook one I don't want it running me around. It's almost a little like bass fishing. Beautiful parklands brown. There it is. Just most nervous moments right here after stalking this fish for so long. Just want to complete the deal that I have. <laughs> Wow, that is fun. 1v1 competition. And if you're patient, this is the result. Let me just see what we've got here. Oh, <laughs> all that, drop him out. Just gotta get the fly out of his mouth. Oh, flies out. It put a simple little tied down minnow. Silver body, little pheasant tail over the back, little tuft of grizzly marabou, a couple of eyeballs. Get that out of the way. Grip them by the tail. Show you the fruits of my labor. What a beautiful fish, and that was so much fun. 1v1, it'll suck hours out of your day, but when you see these fish cruise in the shallows, chasing minnows, it's addictive. Give it a try, it's one of the best ways to enjoy your parkland experience. Well, it's a new day, and today it's a new fishery. Again, one of the charms of the Parkland region. Today we're coming to you from East Goose Lake, one of the two urban fisheries located in the small town of Roblin. These lakes are an excellent opportunity if you've just arrived in the region, you've only got a couple of hours to fish, you don't even have to launch your boat. They've got docks uh, located along the uh, shores of the lake here that you can uh, cast to a fly to and catch some very respectable fish from there. So these little urban fisheries located in the town of Roblin are a great, great addition to any parklands trip. There we go, fish on, fish on. Not sure what it is, is browns in here or in East Goose? Oh, it's going now. Just a really incredible fishery here. We're you can see behind me, we've got Highway 83 that connects the towns of Roblin and Russell. Catch some beautiful rainbow trout. He's eating the zucchini on the upper fly. We'll see. Hopefully we can get this fish in. Beautiful, healthy, nickel bright East Goose Lake. Got the road in the background there. Beautiful little fish. Whoa! There he goes. Well, I think, um, you know, when you, when you take a look at uh, Manitoba hospitality, uh, Manitoba really knows how to, how to host people. We've got beautiful lakes that are, are tucked away and nice, and uh, they produce uh, massive trout. And uh, in, in a matter of days, someone can experience the whole gamut of, of species in a, in a short and economical uh, time frame. You could literally fish one lake in the morning for a few hours and then you could skip over to another lake. It's that close and it's that convenient. We've got uh, Twin Lakes up north. It's a half an hour from here. You can head down to Patterson. It's an hour and a half from here. It's wonderful. The Parklands region of southwestern Manitoba is probably one of the best kept secrets in the world of lake fishing for trout. There are few places in North America with so many drive-to lakes with public access, boat launches, and even bathroom facilities. You don't need to pay for a lodge or even guides. You can bring a boat, a float tube, or even rent either of these craft in Roblin. There are lots of reasonably priced motels in the region. Plus, you can stay at campgrounds and other similar facilities if you want to bring a camper or even tents. Bottom line, the Parklands is a wonderful fishery which is affordable and very accessible with lots of drive-to lakes. Best of all, 
These lakes are blessed with a range of trout species from brown, brook, and rainbow trout to even cross-strain species such as tiger trout. There's really no place like this in Canada. The beauty of the prairies is also the power of the prairies. And that big dark cloud means it's time for us to go. We hope you've enjoyed today's show. We hope you've learned a lot. You hope you see some of the wonderful fishing the Parklands region has to offer. For more information on this show and others in our series, please visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com and follow us on our social media channels, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. For videos like the one you just saw and more, subscribe to our channel. You don't want to miss our weekly uploads of educational videos, exciting trips, and much more. <laughs>